So grasses are the defining feature on the grasslands. Rick Truax is back uh, from the Forest Service and he's going to tell us a little bit more about all of the grasses that we have out here on the grasslands, right? right. So as you saw in the video, there are three general types of grasslands. We have short grass prairie, mixed grass prairie, and tall grass prairie. And really what determines whether you're in a short grass, mixed grass, or tall grass is the amount of rainfall the area reads, the amount of precipitation. And here in the Pawnee, we're in a short grass prairie system, mostly. And that's where we have about 15 inches of rain a year, and that kind of drives us into this short grass prairie system. But because there's so little rainfall in general here, these plants are pretty drought tolerant. So, and drought has been something we've been dealing with for the last several years out here, right? Yeah, it has, and you can see what it looks like today, and we get rain, we had rain yesterday, and you know, we'll talk a bit more about drought later in the program. And what I want to talk about too is just this reality that there's such a delicate balance between the amount of water and how these systems behave. Uh, if you look at our temperate rain uh, grasslands, they receive typically between 10 inches and 30 inches of rain per year, or mm. precipitation per year. If you get much more than that, you'd start becoming a forest over time. If you get oh. much less, you'd start becoming a, a desert. So oh. we're right in that sweet spot where we have these grasslands. And it's, that makes the water that much more important, not just to plants, but to the wildlife that depend on them and to us as people as well. Mm -hmm. and, and plants and wildlife, and, and what, I, what I found out inter was interesting when I came out here, that there's actually fish out in the grasslands. Oh, you bet. We've got a lot of, we've got some streams and a lot of wetlands that are hot spots for biodiversity out here. Yeah, oh, for sure. Now, as we look at, at the land surrounding us, we want to figure out what type of grass that we see, and we have some examples here, don't we? Yeah, we do. So here we've got uh, blue grama, and this is a grass that's pretty common in the grasslands, but this also will occur up in the foothills area, up in the Ponderosa pine forest up there. Oh, okay. And then on this side, we've got buffalo grass, and this is really a true grassland grass. And as you might guess from the name buffalo grass, this is an important food source for bison. We don't have bison out here on the prairie, on the Pawnee National Grassland, but we do have cattle, and the uh -huh. cattle will graze this as well. So it's a really important forage resource for the cattle that we permit to graze on the landscape. And I want to just tell you another interesting thing about this. It forms a very dense root mat, and it, it kind of leaps and then forms sod, essentially. So the oh. early European settlers, when they were coming out, they would cut blocks of sod out of the ground uh -huh. and build houses for shelter. So, and it also is uh, important if you get like heavy rains out here for uh, stopping. Yeah, it, it helps absorb the water as it comes out. Yep, it's got a very fine root mat that helps absorb the water that does come. Beautiful, Rick, a real lesson in water and grass. Thank you so much, right. we appreciate that.